Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. It is only Oracle here today with a PK card reading. So I have four lovely piles here today. We are going to be looking at what needs closer inspection. Uh, this is very just much like tips and tricks, things to keep in mind as you're moving forward to better your life. Maybe it's something you're not seeing entirely. Maybe it's something you haven't addressed. Maybe it's something that will help you to win the Super Bowl. I don't know. Whatever that may be, we're going to look at it. So I got four piles here today. Pile one, pile two, pile three, and pile four. Take a second, see which pile calls to you, and then when you're ready, you can jump to the timestamp in the description box, and I will see you there. Bye. Okay, hello pile one. If you picked this beautiful card, then this is going to be your reading on what needs closer expression or closer, <laughs> closer inspection. But pile number one, I was already getting a message with this card. So um, let's talk about this before we jump into some other cards. I did pre-pull some. So with this card here, we see a woman standing on top of the world. And what I felt when I flipped this card over intuitively for your pile, pile number one, is your expression. Your expression is something that is very important. And it feels, I hear specifically like your face, what face you present to the world, how you maybe groom yourself. It's like your presentation is something that is mattering and it needs a closer inspection. Um, I even get randomly that some of you may have RBF you know, or something like that, where you look harder than you are, and it's almost like deterring people from certain things, or maybe from you from getting to what you want. And so it's maybe by changing just literally your facial expression that you can cultivate something differently. But um, I'm going to read from the book for this one. So it's about direction, purpose, objectives, and taking the first step. Um, and it says, the quote here says, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with the success unexpected in common hours by Henry David Thoreau. So it says, reading, learning, seeing, experiencing something new and setting goals is a journey to tomorrow. Even the longest journey starts with the one first step. So if you're thinking about changing self uh, perception of you or perception that other people have of you, pile one that might need be what needs closer inspection we're going to take a look at what area oh definitely yeah okay we have scorpio here for the area and then we have judgment and the knight of swords okay who you present to the world is very important pile one unfortunately now you should always be yourself i'm not saying don't be yourself scorpio is the most itself right it's more so that by taking a look at how you express and come off to people it's almost like you can spin things, this Knight of Swords, you can spin things to your advantage. There's really something here about the viewpoint of other people. Um, either other people viewing you in overly sexual tones or other people viewing you maybe with Scorpio in a, with the snakes here in a villainous uh, way, thinking that you have ulterior motives, that you're evil. And it feels a lot about the face you present. And so by changing that, it feels like inspecting, how do I come off? How do people perceive me? you can make changes that will ultimately change your life for the better. That's what I feel like. Um, let's, let's take a look here with the archetype cards. I have a lot more to say about this, but I want to, yeah. Yeah, people, there is a huge, huge amount of perception here being a problem. So I'm going to start with Scorpio here. So I think people, um, I mean, you're one of those people I feel that is easily obsessible. And I don't mean obsess or obsessing 
ish, you're a person that people could easily obsess over. Something about you draws in a lot of people. There may be a very look at me aspect of you. A lot of you, you know, women, you may not like to wear a lot of clothes. You may like to dress very, you know, light or show off a lot of your assets. And there is nothing wrong with that, ladies. There's nothing wrong. Or for my gentlemen, maybe you like to wear really tight t-shirts or very, very fancy dress wear. And so... Uh, there is a lot of judgment on what people see. That's what I'm saying here. There's a lot of what do I see and what do I see is going to make the decision for me, is going to determine things for me, is going to change the course of destiny. Interesting. And so when a lot of people see you, pile one, they have a lot of judgments. They have a lot of opinions about you. And... I think by inspecting these opinions, not necessarily that you need to change, but what do people actually think when they see you? I'm not sure if you actually know. I know maybe there's something you want to put off or something you think you put off, but do you know what people actually think when they see you? And I'm not talking about like clicking on a pink card of what do people think when they see me? I mean, actually asking like a friend or someone, you know, what did you think when you first met me? Or what? how do I seem to you? How did I come off? And it feels like getting... Feedback. It honestly feels like you need feedback right now, pile number one, because I think there's something you want. And sometimes to get what we want, we have to present a certain way so people accept us. For example, no one likes to necessarily wear suit and ties to interviews or fancy dress clothes. Some people love that, but a lot of people don't. And that's not really how you dress in day to day. But you know, going into an interview, if you dress better, you're more likely to get the job. You dress to impress because you know that you are... Essentially, it's like managing perceptions and you need to take a look at what the perception of you is because I feel like that is something, yeah, I'm getting dizzy here. That is something that is actually keeping you, the perception people have of you, maybe keeping you from getting to where you want to go because people are, um, I almost, I'm hearing reading you wrong. They're reading you wrong. They're not reading you the right way. And a lot of that may also use your, be your way of speaking. Maybe you're a very, you know, like me, maybe you're a very direct speaker. You just get straight to the point. You don't like to add a lot of fluff to things. And there is nothing wrong with how authentic you are, pile one. I want to definitely reiterate this by like saying, just because you're evaluating perceptions of you and you're looking into this, um, this idea of what people see when they see you does not mean who you are is inherently wrong or there's something wrong with it. But, and this is what Spear says, yeah, but... If you are trying to achieve something, if you'd like something, if you'd like a certain reputation, if you'd like a certain job, if you'd like a certain, maybe you're looking for a book deal, or maybe you're looking to become TikTok famous, or maybe you are looking to produce art, or maybe you're looking to really get your business growing in some way, shape, or form, or get your name out there, or get a job, you know, um, people's perception of you matters. It makes the biggest difference, unfortunately. Uh, because you are constantly interacting with the world around you, those perceptions dictate kind of whether or not you're able to get the thing you want and I feel like you really do want something there's something you want and part of what's keeping you from getting there is what people view you as being yeah I get that people have to see a dark quality in you like they think they think you're they think you have like a dark energy to you but at the same time this is like also a very attractive trait say kind of a siren or I didn't get femme fatale but vampire here is really giving that but also it may not be that you yourself I'm getting are actually a dark person but that um you kind of put up protective measures because you know people are like that so it's it could even be less so that you are inherently a dark person and more so that people around you think you are but that's only because you're putting up a shield I get this idea of having shields up you put up your shield to protect yourself against lower frequencies lower vibrations lower energies you know yeah all right so let's see here let's see here what what, are, what does pile one want I think that would help what does pile one want because there's something about you wanting something but not being able to get it because of how people view you okay yeah a lot of you want um a lot of you want some sort of recognition, some sort of admiration, some sort of desire, and, or I'm even getting some of you want that idea to shift. Um, so yeah, spirit is giving me it's on opposite ends. So, so for some of you, you come off very innocent. Like, in fact, it's the opposite. Like you have an, a sexual undertone to you. Don't get me wrong. And you, you can be very sexual. Some of you might very enjoy, much enjoy the act of sex or have a very intense vibe to you. But you come off being kind of sweet and innocent and fluffy, like the pink in the background here. And you're actually wanting to identify more with the darker parts of yourself. But you're not really dressing the part. Like you're not really 
I guess you're not oozing seduction and some of you actually want to ooze seduction in that way to draw people in. That's, you know, up to you. Now, on the other end, a lot of you are unconsciously oozing sexual energy or you naturally have a darker appearance or darker look, but you're finding that it's bringing a lot of lower vibrations to you, a lot of conflict, a lot of people trying to fight for your attention, and maybe you're looking for something different. Like, And maybe the people who come up to you, this is also something I get, maybe people who come up to you aren't always let's say they're just not, they don't have the best intentions, right? Like they're coming up to you for your body. They're coming up to you for maybe sex or pleasure. They're not coming up to you with genuine intent or genuine ideas. And some of you are like, I want, um, but I want someone who is genuine. Like I want people around me who are genuine, not just people who value me for my body. Well, then um, a lot of times that why people approach certain people is a look. I will give you an example. I went to this event once. I'm not going to specify all of it, but I went to this event and I dressed really dark. I had like a dark dress on. I had dark lipstick on. My hair was done up dark. Like everything was dark. And I love, I love dressing dark. Like I identify with this energy of Scorpio, but I was approached by a guy who was telling me about like all these sexual things. And generally, if I wasn't at that convention and dressed the way or at that event and dressed the way I was, um, men don't treat me that way. Like they don't come up to me saying a bunch of sexual things. Generally, I'm lucky and grateful for that. But so essentially the dress I was wearing, the way I presented myself, uh, this person mistakenly thought I was, I mean, not this person mistakenly thought I was like sexual in nature or maybe I'd be willing to hook up, but I wasn't. And it was fine. He was respectful. But the point is what I was wearing, how I was dressed, the energy, right? The lipstick, the dark lipstick, the dark outfit, the heels, that all gave a vibe to someone. And so if you want perception to change power one, or you're looking for something genuine, it may be about switching your appearance to the outer world. And I want to stress, and Spears like stress this, this does not mean you cannot keep your um, dress wear. So in the sense of, around the right company or maybe in private at home, if you enjoy dressing dark, dress dark, right? If it's something you enjoy, you should do. But it, it's like, maybe just don't do it in public because public perception and private perception are very different. In private, you are always welcome to be the most yourself. And in public, you are also welcome to be the most yourself. But the problem with the public is they have opinions on it or they will make assumptions about you based on your appearance. And so if you don't want certain people to assume certain things or to have certain things come by your way, you may have to change what you are presenting to the people. Um, that is very much important. Yeah, because a lot of you are looking for something gen gen generous, like you're looking for something real. For others of you who are the, on the innocent scale or like, I want to kind of scale up my sexy, you know, you're looking for, I think like in some ways you want a bit more attention, you know, a different way of doing things. But there really is a balance, I feel, what they're trying to say with this Two of Pentacles is that like you can balance who you are with who you want to be perceived as, pile number one. That's very important. You can balance that. You don't always have to be innocent. You don't always have to be, you know, you can change how you dress and therefore change the um, perception of you. I just want you to note too, though, that once people see a sexual energy, sexual energy is very hard to hide. I feel like once it's discovered, it's one of those things that you can for instance, I'm, I'm saying you can keep it hidden. Like people cannot know you're sexual, but once they know you're sexual, they can't unknow it. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like once you reveal something, people are not able to unsee it. And that's likewise with your body. That's likewise, they're not going to be able to unsee you. But if you keep things a little more held back, um, then you can almost reveal things to the right people when you're ready. And again, I am not here to shame anyone. I want to stress this so, so much. I'm not here to shame anyone who likes to show off their body or who likes to wear heavy makeup or dark things. I enjoy that stuff too. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, if you want people's opinion of you to be different, if you want different types of people to approach you, think about what you're presenting to people. What are they seeing? Even if it's not equivalent to how you view yourself. That is what is important here, especially if you're looking for other people to interact with you differently. If you don't care how people interact with you, then yeah, you don't need to inspect this closely. But it feels like a lot of you do because you have, you're have you looking for something and you're not getting it because people aren't seeing you correctly. They're, they're seeing what they want to see. And you can change, you can change perception of you, pile one. You can definitely do that. So I want to see what other advice spirit has here. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We're going to get one more. There's like this idea of a lot of people wanting to offer you things. Like there's a strong attraction to you, pile. Pile number one. Yeah, there's definitely a change here. A change, I feel like a change in presentation. And a lot of you may choose to dress more conservatively soon. 
um, or dress just differently. Or likewise, maybe you like to dress like a bum a lot and you're finding like, I need to start sprucing things up, like I should dress better, something like that. Put these up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, um, so yeah, for a lot of you, this may be for a job or a career that if you're not, it's like if you don't come correct or the way they want you to be, they're not going to look past face value. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Pyle. One, I think what Spirit wants to stress here is that a lot of people do this, this face value judgment, because to be honest, we don't have time and people don't care. They want to keep their world small. They want to seize what they get. They don't really want to, I get this idea, we don't want to dig further. We don't want to investigate to figure out who you are. We're going to, we're going to look, we're going to see, you know, your resume or what you are on paper. And that's going to make our decision mixed with how you look. We're not, we're not digging deep into your psyche. We're not digging deep into who you are as a person. I think what's beautiful about you, pile number one, to add here is you're a very, complex and depth ridden person which is why you have these different assets of you these different um perceptions you have a lot of depth to you unfortunately though the general public people who see you for the first time they're not looking at depth when we first see someone it is often shallow we're judging appearances because that's um that's our first indicator you know we really do use our first our five senses uh especially our eyes to solve a lot of things for us and to make uh judgments on things so yeah, yeah, I feel this idea of loneliness and wanting, like wanting, you have something you want, whether that is a job, whether that is a romantic relationship, but you, you, you changing how you're being viewed and also maybe how you speak to people could make the difference. And once again, I will keep stressing this because I cannot stress it enough. This is not an indication that who you are is a problem, Pile One, or who you are is not enough. It is absolutely enough. There is nothing wrong with who you are right now. But if you are desiring something, sometimes you have to make changes to get what you want, right? Like, for instance, if you desire a hot body, um, either you're going to have to lose weight, right? You're going to have to go on a diet or you're going to have to go get surgery. You're not just going to get a hot body existing and constantly eating Cheetos and sitting on a couch. That's not how it works. Likewise, if you want people to change how they view you, you can't just keep saying I'm different, I'm different or wanting to have it be different but not doing anything. If you want people to view you differently, you have to change something. That's unfortunately how it works. Um, but I do feel like you would be very successful at this should you choose to implement this in pile one and I think you would see a lot of benefits in the types of people that approach you that's what I feel like you would see I, I even hear spirit saying an immediate difference so if you like decide for today take off your e-girl look or whatever you're into and to go out in a different kind of dress more mature or whatever have you whatever way you're kind of thinking um you'll immediately see a difference. You'll immediately see that uh, people treat you differently, maybe with a little more dignity, maybe you get less stares, uh, but you have to be comfortable with this idea of change, this changing of who you present to the outside world. But yeah, I don't really think there are any other messages. I'm just gonna get one more of the archetypes. Yeah, it's this one, okay. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of you on a, to end here, this is our final card because this is just what you need to inspect and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but a lot of you have very loving, soft hearts, but you present a bit like a badass, right? Like you present a little darker and your it's like your heart is being covered up by attention or sexual energy. And yeah, it's like people aren't really seeing the heart of you. And if you want people to see the heart of you, um, you if you change your outfit, and I'm getting shivers, if you change your outfit, people will literally start to, they'll they'll take you, they're not going to just um, put that label on you of sexual, you know, this is someone I want to be with sexually or something like that. And then they'll get to know you and they'll be like, wow, this is person, someone's beautiful. You know, they have all these parts. And then it's not that the sexual part of you still doesn't exist. It absolutely does. This, this appeal does not still, it's not that it doesn't exist. It does. But it's just, I feel like the idea of giving to the right people. So if this is like, I've been looking for a genuine partner and I just keep coming up with F boys or all this stuff, try flipping up your look or flipping up how you present yourself and also i also hear apps so maybe apps are not the best place to meet someone right like maybe um donating kind of generating giving yourself to a cause might be helpful like so for instance maybe this is a result of you feeling a passion i'm just gonna say for strippers maybe you feel a passion for sex workers and that's something you really believe in strongly um Go to like a sex worker rally or go to, you know, advocate for the things that you believe in. And um, you'll see that you'll actually find people who feel the same way, right? Like that maybe don't. So for instance, say you went to 
a convention advocating for sex worker laws, you know, to help protect them or whatever. Um, if you went to that and there might be, say, a man there who also believes in the same and he's dressed more conservatively than you are, uh, you might be able to link up and find a soulmate that way. So that's what I kind of, I'm, I'm feeling here is that like the, the more you go towards service and you, um, I guess shun away from being, it feels like shun away from being flashier for the time being, unless, unless, like I said, there are, there are those of you who are looking to be flashier and looking to gain attention, in which case that's your path. That's where you, sh maybe you dress a little more plainly and you'd like to dress a little more frisque, then go for that. But for those of you who already do and are like, yeah, I'm looking for, you know, stuff that's more genuine, you're really gonna, I just feel the sense of you're really going to find it. You're really going to be, you're gonna be, it's like pointing you in the, one's here, right here, pointing you in the right direction towards your destiny. So yeah, Pile One, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope I didn't offend you and you don't feel like there's anything wrong with you because it really isn't. And like, I support people being as authentic as they can be in terms of dress wear and appearance. But unfortunately, the world is a little bit shallow. I'm just gonna say the world's, the world's a little bit shallow. But I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, comment down below. And let me know how you dress. If you've noticed this, if you know you have a sexual energy or something, and you've been trying to look for something genuine, and you've been thinking about switching up your look, let me know. And yeah, and if you do switch up your look, let me know how that goes. That's interesting. But yeah, that's all I see for you. Um, and I will see you in the next one, Pile 1. Bye. Okay, hello, Pile 2. If you picked this image here, the swan thing, storks, I don't even know. This is going to be your reading. So, um, this is not fun for me, okay, Pile 2? I don't like telling people mean things, and I don't like being negative. It's not a fun trait. Like, when I get negative readings, and this isn't going to be a negative reading by any means, but it might start off that way. So, bear with me, okay? Um, if you are easily triggered and you don't like hearing negative things or you were just looking for a happy-go-lucky what needs closer inspection, click out of this reading, not for you. But if you are looking to actually improve yourself and you're looking for what you need to get better or what could help you to excel or level up kind of, then this may be helpful. So when I picked this card, what I really heard was the word snobbery. Snobbery. And almost like I got this idea of, you know how when, I hate saying this, but you know how when there's like a group of girls and they're all talking about how one girl dresses or something. It's literally like the opposite of Paul one. It's kind of funny. Uh, but you know how like there's a group of girls and they're all standing around and they're talking about like, oh, this one girl is dressed kind of promiscuous and they're saying all these negative things about her. Um, it's kind of giving that energy. Now, I'm not saying you are that person and I definitely don't feel like you're the ringleader of that, but it's almost like this card is about assimilation, belonging and acceptance. It's about what, I hear this, the, the quote, a man is known by the company he keeps, right? what are the people around you like and what are you pretending you are to fit in so for in in the instance of the gossiping girls you might not be a gossip in that sense or you don't believe in that but you'd be like oh yeah you know even though you don't care how she's dressing or maybe you think it's even cool you'd be like oh yeah that's you know ew um and that's not really you so i feel like you need to look at what you do yeah what you allow what you let people get away with around you. That's what I feel like. What do people get away with around you? They might get away with saying some really racist, some really homophobic, some really awful things. And in the sake of not raising an argument or in the sake of acceptance or keeping people close or feeling like you fit in, you'll kind of just go with it. Even if that's not, like personally you feel against that. I, I, Cause I get the strong sense of personally, like I actually don't agree with that, but I'm afraid to be different. Okay. Yeah, like I'm afraid to rock the boat in any way, shape, or form. Interesting. Hang on here, I'm gonna listen. Okay, and then uh, Spirit is saying here, I'm really being drawn to the Seven of Pentacles. What do you want long-term? Like, do you want what these people have? For instance, another example, and these are bad stereotypes, guys, I'm sorry. Like, I don't obviously think most people are just this way, but maybe, I don't know. I don't get out enough to really know. But, so, for the example, maybe you really, you have this rich group of friends, right? The rich group of friends who just make fun of poor people, which is okay. But like, you know, they make fun of poor people and they make fun of people who are different. They make fun of anybody who's not in their crew. And it's kind of like, well, if that's what it is to be in that crew, is that really the crew you want to be in long term? Because that's all you're going to be doing is crapping on other people. And are those people you actually want to be like? Yeah, it's like the people, who do you surround yourself with and do they have the type of life you'd like to live? Do they have the future you would like to be a part of? And if so, why do you want that future? Really look at that. Like, why do I want to be like them? What do they really have? Um, it's really about its values here with the Seven of Pentacles. What are the values that you have? And growing away from things that actually really don't foster that I hear. Like this, 
was great, but it doesn't really foster me. And this could be in a lot of things. It could even be I'm picking up school. So maybe you're a student and you really actually don't like school or you really don't like college or something, but it's like, oh, well, that's what everyone does my age or that's what everyone does. And so you keep doing it, but it's not actually bringing you true joy. It's not actually making, it's not where you want to go long-term. Maybe long-term you actually want to be an entrepreneur or um, you want to build houses in Bali. You know, you want a different future. Uh, separate. I hear this idea of separate yourself from things that really don't align with who you are. You're not a stork, right? You're like, you're not these birds. You're, this person is a human. You're a person Align with things that are truly joyous to you, not just what other people have told you to be joyous. Something else I get is drinking. That's very big around young people or just people in general or smoking weed. And a lot of people don't even like that crap. They just do it because it's social. What if you're not having fun, dip. You know what I'm saying? Like if this isn't actually what makes you truly happy and fulfilled, it's like it's this idea of letting go and fostering things that truly do make you happy because those things are out there and there are people who enjoy the same thing so like in the instance i'm talking about maybe you don't like weed or drinking but you really do love watching movies like you actually love that find a group of friends who enjoy just watching movies there are other people out there who enjoy watching movies get on a reddit thread um you know what i mean start online and make your way from there but it's, it's the idea of like stop pretending to be something you're not in any area okay there's there is an area yeah i feel like spirit saying there is an area whether it's career whether it's at home with your family whether it is you know, with your friendships or your coworkers, there's an area where you're not, yeah, it's not true to who you are as a person. And um, it needs inspection. Like you need to look at when you feel like, it's almost like when you lie, like pay attention to when you lie or when you don't say the truth or when you kind of cover up who you are a bit. Uh, there's an idea of covering up, definitely. So this could also be like, oh, your coworkers and, and you kind of are just, you're covering up like what you really do in your free time. You know, they're like, oh, what'd you do last weekend? You're like, oh, you know, I just went out for drinks. Even though you didn't go out for drinks, you stayed home and maybe you just ate ice cream on the couch. Uh, places where you lie or you feel like you should have shame for being who you are, those are the places you need to give a little more love to, I feel. I feel it's this card, yeah. Okay. So a lot of you are artistic, pile number two. You have artistic interests. You like the arts. I did say movies. But it could also be even in that field, you think you have to do what other people in your field do. Interesting. So I'm also being drawn to like, maybe just because of all the news and stuff, gun control. I'm not trying to tell you which way to believe on things, but maybe all of your friends, and this could even be the opposite. Like maybe all your friends are very strict. They think like, oh yeah, gun control should be, you know, really big and we should all restrict it or, or no one should be allowed to have a gun. And you're like, well, I actually think people should be allowed to have guns, but you, it's like, you can't express your opinion. I think there's this idea of needing to be able to express your truth. And if you're in a situation, you keep remaining in a situation where you've been lying, either it, the truth is going to come out and they're not going to view you in a very nice light for lying or you're going to have to basically keep up with a lie. And it's not, again, I don't think you guys are just inherently liars or bad people pile to, or you're lying to people purposefully. You're like, oh, you know, you're just making up things for, I don't think you're making up things for attention. You're you're making things up or you're um, holding back truth to fit in, right? Like it's, yeah, you're not doing it to get more. You're doing it to make sure that you're not being um, shunned out or outcasted or singled out in any way, shape or form. But the funny part is, is you think, I think some of you think being outcasted would mean you're alone, but I'm being drawn to the Six of Swords, how he ushers two people across. There are other people like you. Uh, no matter how unpopular your opinion is, I promise you, you're not the only one with the unpopular opinion. And how do you find each other if no one is willing to voice what they believe? Uh, maybe you really don't like artists in certain ways. Maybe you don't like musicians or you don't like something. It's like you have unpopular ideals, but you kind of put them away for the good of or what you think is the good or to fit in. But Spirit really wants you to return to them and actually nurture them a little more because you don't have these opinions for no reason. Either your parents gave them to you, you know what I mean? Or they're based off of experience or they're based off of um, maybe the Akashic Records or your intuition. Like they're not based off of nothing. No one really gets an opinion. Like you couldn't have an opinion from nothing because in your opinion, you wouldn't have one. It has to be based on some form of information, whether that's the right information, you know, or whether that's information that everyone agrees with or has been proven is a different thing, but it is based off of something. Give a little more nurturing to it. Um, especially if you is unpopular, investigate more why you believe that thing. But it feels like a lot of you are smart. So you don't believe something for no reason. Like you have a reason why you would believe something. Um, and there's really this idea of expressing it 
expressing things that yeah are really beyond the five senses so it's almost like the points that people miss you should express more so for instance with the my very first example judging a girl because she's dressed promiscuously maybe you're you know maybe you know someone who thinks oh women get raped because of how they dress like it's on them they shouldn't dress that way but you realize you know that um you know that even in uh, Middle Eastern countries, certain Arabic countries where women are clothed from head to toe, you know, they're only showing their eyes, they are still raped. Uh, so clearly the dress wear is not deterring a rapist from raping someone, right? Like if they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it. So maybe you know that and you don't actually agree with that, but you would pretend. So it's like, instead of um, trying to look at things at face value, look, look to your own depth and start expressing your depth. Uh, it feels also like writing. So some of you may want to journal. Maybe you want to write an article. Uh, it could even be, I also hear this word of anonymously. So a lot of you, maybe you're not comfortable having your name attached to it quite yet. That's okay. I just feel like there's this idea of starting to express your truth, trying to express what you know, because it's worth something and stop trying to fit in. And I, I hear this, I know it's cliche, but it's like, because you weren't born to fit in. I'm being drawn to the sun. We only have one sun. We only have one star. Yes, we can see other stars, but they're so distant and so far. I mean, some of those stars are already dead. We, we, we the earth, only revolve around one sun, one star. And you're the star. Um, stop trying to be a person on earth or stop trying to be a planet when you're a star. You know what I'm saying? Be a star. And likewise, just because it's the only star that these planets revolve around here, you know, this, our solar system, the our little solar system here there are other stars that other planets revolve around more than likely you know so uh there's you're not also alone in your originality i guess but at the same time don't hide it don't try and put it away embrace it that's so lovely i feel for you pal too it's really hard to be yourself and to be ostracized or to feel like no one gets it or no one knows or you'd be very lonely but yeah there's this idea of you're actually going to find like-minded people. And the thing is, you're going to find real fulfillment. Pile number two, the benefit of doing this, of looking at this more closely, the places where you lie or you hold back truth, is that there there are people like you. I think you're underestimating that. And, and you can have true fulfillment surrounded by people. It's like community. You would be bringing in a true sense of community and not a false one that at the end of it, when you actually achieve what you want or you get what you want, you're not happy. So... I'm going to go with one more example again with the rich and poor people. So maybe you're a poor person, you know, and you're hanging out with rich people and they're laughing at the poor people and they all got their lab Lamborghinis and yeah, 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 they're rich. That's cool. But it's like, even if you got rich, pile two, you wouldn't be happy because it's not actually aligned with who you are. So even though you would make it and you'd assimilate and you would have your Lamborghini too, you're rich, yay. You're not happy because that's not who you are. And so be with people who are who you are and you'll find... I mean, passion really does bring money. Like if you, you can monetize literally anything. I mean, people sell feet pics, people sell, look, spiritual guidance, people sell hair, toes, they sell labor, they sell time, they sell their bodies. Like you can sell anything. So my point is that you can find a way to monetize what you actually enjoy doing or your passions rather than constantly just trying to foster something that isn't fostering you essentially. And I feel like it would be a lot more balance between your light and dark i don't know why i got with this temperance card that some of you are earth angels so this is a part of your mission and you've kind of like been holding back your wings birds are big here white birds look out for white birds but birds are big here but yeah it's almost like you've been holding back your own wings you've been clipping your own wings back in efforts to be like humans right like you're almost like the angel who clipped its wings don't clip your wings pile two embrace your wings because what you, there are other angels, right? Like there's not just one angel. You feel alone because angels are rare, or sure, they're not the most common, but there are other earth angels, there are other angels out there, and it's not worth it. Like it's much more worth it for you to capitalize on your gifts or to use your gifts for the greater good than it is to pretend that they're not there or, or throw them away in an effort to be accepted in a certain community. Yeah. This is definitely shadow work for you, Pyle. Yeah, there's definitely shadow work here with your emotional state pile too. Yeah, being drawn to the heart, being stabbed. A lot of you could have been bullied. I apologize if you were, or like you were in something toxic that it's almost like this was a learned coping mechanism pile too, that you learned to front. Like you learned to front because you had to, to survive, which makes sense. I think I had another reading like this. I can't even remember which one it was, but I kind of had another reading similar to this. Maybe it was feeling trapped, 
anxious and fearful. I'll link that leading reading below. Maybe check that one out. But it's almost like someone hurt your heart or really gave you a false sense of security. I also hear a false sense of security that you feel like you always have to front. Like there's this idea of having to lie or pretend and not being able to be who you are. Hmm. So I'm being drawn to this five of cups. Hold on. Okay. And it's like, I hear, I hear spirit saying what I heard is they have to address it. So hmm. rather than like, just try and cope with it, cope with it by doing things to survive. It's kind of like, um, I always get this idea of a war zone, you know, where someone's bleeding out and you say, oh no, you're fine. Like you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And you're saying that for the other person because, and maybe for yourself, cause you can't really accept that maybe someone is dying or something is wrong, but it's like, after it happens, you can't just keep saying you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. You know what I mean? You should deal with it. So it's like, even if at the time you had to do certain things to cope, you had to assimilate to cope, you had to do it. There's a point where when it's over, you actually have to look at that. You can't just keep saying it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, because that mindset will no longer serve you. Like saying they're alive, they're alive, they're alive. When that person has died, it's not actually helping you. What would help you more is to say like, okay, they died. This hurt. Like I tried my best. I tried what I did or I was betrayed or whatever it is and face it. There's this idea of facing even with herself and her reflection here, facing what you've lost, facing the loss, facing what you've had to go through. And what does that, what does that entail? What does that entail? Yeah. Yeah. So it didn't, it does pile to, it does involve some destruction. Um, facing the dark parts of you or facing the pains or the things you've had to do to survive is explosive and explosions are not always fun in this case the destroyer is a good archetype okay it's releasing what is potentially destructive so you can have the new life that is essentially built on a more solid foundation it's kind of like you know when a house i think this is equivalent of a house you are home okay you are home in your self pile too and even two here so two might be a big number but you know how um, you have a house and maybe it's abandoned and the people move out or they don't take care of it and it's in really bad condition and maybe they're, um, you know, the floor is rotting and sinking in and the ceiling's falling and there's all these bad things. And at some point you decide, yeah, we can't actually save this. Like this house isn't worth what it would take to fix. It actually would be more, you know, it'd be better if we just uh, demolish the house and put in a new foundation. That's kind of what I feel like Spirit is saying. Yeah, and what needs to happen for you, Pile 2, it's not worth it for you to even try to rescue these people or to do anything with this, um, maybe the situation where you feel like you're lying or wherever you feel like you have to hide. It's more so, um, or even within yourself, it's more so you have to blow it. You have to demolish the place to build something on better foundation because at this point, it feels like it is so far gone. It's so far sunken. It's not it would be more harmful to you, right? It'd be less benefit to you to try and chase after it and fix it than it would be to let it go or to get rid of it or destroy it and then, um, you know, deal with that, deal with those consequences. Because there is a point, because some houses, you know, if you catch it before it gets too bad, before the mold gets too bad, before things get too sunken, you can fix it. But if you don't, the longer you let it go on, the less likely that this thing is redeemable in that way. And this isn't that you aren't redeemable or anything like that. It's like, this is a foundation in you that you are resetting. You're rebuilding your home, okay? Um, and so that involves facing the disappointment. That involves maybe destroying some things and getting some new things in. This is a very singular process for you, but I do feel like you're in a deep process of healing, or you will be if you decide to look at this and not just keep trying to fit in, that in the long term will be the best thing for you, Pile 2. You'll be so happy you did it in the long term. And I'm feeling tired during this reading, Pile 2, so I get it. And my heart hurts. Like, it feels like it's... um. I don't know. It just feels pain. Like it feels kind of almost, it's not even buzzing. It feels more like squeezed almost. So I feel for you, pal, too. At this point, I feel like a lot of you are exhausted. You're very tired. So don't be afraid to take the rest because this is a, this is a definitely a journey for you. Uh, and shadow work is very draining. So be sure that you're taking care of yourself and also that you're surrounding yourself I feel like with people who uplift that or doing things that do bring you joy still like not just um staying inside all day or like falling into the sadness like there's a balance here because I mean even drawn to the dog how dogs are just very happy like have something that does cheer you up because you're in for a turnover essentially you're in for a very a change in your life and change is not easy 
it's not, you know, this is a very much an overhaul because you're, you're changing the long-term plan here. That's what I feel like. You're really going to have to change the long-term plan. And it's kind of like, that's kind of disappointing too. Cause I don't know how much you put in, whether you like this thing or not, but it's like you, it's almost like you put so many years into this or so much time into this. It's disappointing to have to think you'd have to start again, but in the long term, even though it's going to be a slow process, you'll be much happier. And this is a home that you're going to maintain as you go along. So you're not going to have to build another home. You know what I mean? Like if you, it's this, this idea of like, if you get this right, and it's really, it's not in the sense that you can get it wrong, but it's more so like if you address this properly, you can have a very much beautiful life. Yeah. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Paul, too. I know this was heavy. I'm sorry. Like, you know, comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments. I do read them. I'm sorry I don't always respond, but I am here. And um, yeah, I'm sending you all the brightness in the world, Pile 2. All the brightness. Because it is there. There's a lot of sun. But yeah, if you enjoyed this reading, if you know this is talking about, comment down below, Pile 2. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, hello, Pile number 3. If you picked this card, then this is going to be your reading. So you picked the first card in this entire deck and the card represents as read from the book here it says a new beginning from a new beginning release from the past you may have a fresh start at any moment you choose for this thing we call failure is not the falling down but the staying down so i feel like um what needs closer inspection is endings and beginnings endings and beginnings there's something here about setting a new foundation and specifically what you want to, what do you want to be your act? That's so interesting. That's what I hear. What do you want to be your act? So for instance, you know, in a circus, they have people who uh, twirl, you know, things, they do the batons, they maybe um, do weird contortion stuff. Then they have people who blow fire, like they have different acts. Uh, what is your act? I'm also being drawn to the greatest showman with Zendaya, I think, right? Right. Where she's like, uh, She's like, what's your act? He's like, I don't have an act. And she says, everybody has an act. Um, and so I feel like you are going to have an act coming up. It's almost like you're going to be on stage too, but let's let's see more here. I went ahead and pre-pulled some cards. So we have Pisces, the Mystic, and then we had the Tower and Judgment. Yeah, I feel this sense of, uh, instead of, you know, people say like, oh, let your body talk. It feels like let your spirit talk, pile three. What does your spirit want to say? What? It's this idea of what do you hold near and dear to your heart? What makes you feel like you're glowing? What do you feel drawn to? There's this idea of change big. What needs closer inspection here is change and who you want to be moving forward because it feels like you are closing out with Pisces being the end. And the, first of all, this card talks about endings and beginnings. Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac and it represents the same thing. It's the end of the Zodiac entering Aries. And so there's really this idea of as you're closing out this cycle, who do you want to be moving forward? What do you want your life to look like moving forward? What changes do you want to see? Do you enjoy the rain or the sunshine more? You know what I mean? Do you love a good thunderstorm or do you love sandy beaches? And it's not about what you think you should want. I think that's very important. It's not about what you think you should want, Pi One. It's what do I actually want? What uh, feels good in my heart? What, what makes my soul feel lit up? What makes me want to dance? What makes me want to sing? What makes me want to play? What is most authentically in my spirit? And expressing that. Uh, that is very big here. There's a huge sense of expression coming up, but it's making sure that you are... You're being true to yourself, true to your desires, I feel like. And a lot of you, yeah, it's like this idea of not wanting what people tell you to want, but wanting what you want. Let's see. What needs closer inspection? Yeah. It's like not worrying about um, the eyes watching, not worrying about family expectations here. So what needs closer inspection for you, pile number one or three? I keep saying one because you have the one here, but you're pile three. What needs closer inspection for you, Pile 3, is any area that you are holding yourself back and holding yourself back out of fear of judgment, out of um, maybe shame because you don't think what you like is interesting or cool. It's like any place that you are not allowing your spirit to exist authentically, any place that you recede, uh, any place that you feel like you hide. I feel like that's also because uh, Pisces also is hiding. It's, uh, again, it's the dreamy, it's the unseen, it's the thin veil between there and not there. And so it's like any place where you feel like you're hiding or you're afraid because of judgment or you're afraid to be yourself, despite loving it, those are the areas you want to look at. What do you love that you keep secret? Yeah. And 
you secret from your family, maybe secret from other people. What do you love that you keep a secret? You shouldn't, yeah. I hear Spirit saying like, you shouldn't keep it a secret. You should just love it. You know, you should just love it. Don't, um, don't hide what you love. Don't hide your heart. Don't hide your spirit. Show it. Cause you have the six of wands here. We wouldn't have had the six of wands here if we weren't talking about recognition for what you do or being um, known in a community amongst people for what you do. And even likewise, having a family, um, finding love through what you do, finding people who, I also feel like with the 10 of cups here, finding people who admire you for your strength, for being so authentic, for saying maybe what they've always wanted to say, but they've been scared to say. Uh, this area is really what needs closer inspection. I'm gonna switch over to the goddess cards. I haven't used these for any other pile yet, but I feel like there's a message for you here. Pile number three. Yeah water um water is some of the strongest stuff here and the thing about water is it is it erodes over time so i feel like there's this idea of over time starting this new beginning if you start it and this is almost everything is kind of in alignment but i think people who are spiritual oops sorry i knocked 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 the camera here um, everything has sort of been in alignment in these three readings, but I feel when you are spiritual in general, there's kind of just an energy and, uh, the collective can tend to have a lot of the same things happening, just slight nuanced differences. And what I feel here with the bodies of water is that, uh, similar to pile two, but a little different, anything you want, because you're a little different pile three, pile two has to like go through and destroy the foundation that isn't good. You pile three, you're like at a fresh start. Like that's what I'm hearing, a fresh start. You don't have a foundation right now in the best sense of the word, not in a way that's scary or you don't have a home, but in a way that like you are setting it now. You are, you are, you are, you know, laying down each brick. What do you want your house to be? You know, what do you want your future to look like? Like what, um, and it's not a matter, and I, I even hesitate to say this, Pile 3, like, you don't want to, yeah, here's Spirit saying, you don't want to actually look far in the future. This is, oh, this is different. Okay. Okay. Spirit says you don't want to look far in the future, so scratch that. It don't, it doesn't matter what you want it to look like. What, yeah, okay, they're like, what feels right? What do you enjoy doing? What makes you happy? What makes you feel peaceful? What makes you feel connected to people, connected to yourself, connected to your joy? These are the things you want to connect to to build your foundation. So it's really like, it's like enjoy, instead of worrying about the house you're going to build or the long term, select each brick accordingly. Oh, that's so cute. So I'm also being drawn to, you know how when you design a house and there are bricks in different areas or different types of bricks, you know, they have different types of uh, material to build a house with. You want to build your house. Basically, you want to build your home. You want to build your new beginning with passion. I feel like that's the word, passion. Things you love, things that make you feel good. And so like each brick you lie down, it's not about worrying about you know the final house or what it's all looking like it's like do i like this brick though like i picked you know out of all the bricks in this in this in this pile of like mortar of bricks or whatever i picked my favorite brick and i put it on and i picked my next favorite brick and i put it on and on and on you go just picking from like your favorite and just going and putting all of that together to build a house there's this idea of joy being the central builder of what you do pile number three because the thing about water I'm going to keep being drawn to with this bodies of water is a road. Water erodes over time. So if there is a goal, if there's something you want or not, it, again, not, not that, that's not the thing, but like, if there was something, um, like say you do need money to survive. So say you're really passionate about walking. We're just going to say walking. You're passionate about walking, but you really need to make money. Um, it's like through time, maybe through walking and other things, you're able to find a way to make money off of it. So like you're able to erode your rock. It's like you can reach a goal. You can literally change. Also here, change the shape of your reality right now. You're at a very powerful, with the six of wands here too, a very powerful manifestation point, pile three. You're like... Um, yeah, I hear spirits saying like, pay close attention to this. Like really? Because if you don't set this foundation right, then you may have to knock it down again later. But if you do this right, yeah, I hear this idea in my ears ringing. If you do this right, you won't have to do it again. That's what spirit's saying. Like you won't, you know, there's a chance that, yes, of course, something always comes and knocks your house over or something, but it's like, you won't have to, you know how to build your house properly. You know what to fuel it with, right? Like your passion, your joy, your light, what brings you light, what you want, light you want to extend to the world. And so, um, yeah, with water here, I really feel this idea of connecting that with your emotions to what feels right to you, feels right, not what thinks what you think is right not what looks right to other people what feels right to you you follow that and people will follow you wow yeah spear is like that's strong but like you follow that and people will follow you pile three that's what i hear and this is the point like this is your beginning interesting all right i feel this one here and this one here yeah you see you have king and vampire 
So you need to be aware of things that aren't, all right, Pile three, you need to be aware of things that are and are not making you happy. Um, King here is enlightened, benevolent leadership, benefiting those in charge. The vampire is the shadow side. Makes you aware that someone or something is draining your life force. Pile three, it's extra important that you pay attention to where you feel unmotivated, where you feel tired, where you feel like um, dry, like there's not a lot of fluid. There's not a lot of movement where you feel stagnant. Those areas right now, are not for you. That's what I hear Spirit saying. So if you feel stagnant or dry somewhere, that's because it's not it's not passionate. Like it's not in your heart. That's why you're having trouble getting through it. Interesting. It's draining you. It's not, you're not, you know, it's not giving you energy. You're drain, it's draining you. You want each brick that you're putting down. It's like, as you build your house, you also want your house to build you, build you up, make you feel really good. And of course there are tough points, but this is the beginning. And so it's like, this should be the point where you have the most energy. I feel like Spirit is saying you should have the most energy right now. And if you don't have the most energy right now, it's because you're not doing the things that would fuel that, if that makes any sense. So if you don't have energy, it's because you're not doing things in alignment with your spirit, really. You're just doing things, um, I hear like, because I should or because of this. Drop all of that away because you're not, you don't want to set your foundation like that. This is your beginning, pal three. This feels very serious. I feel like this sphere is like, yeah, this is very serious. Like it's because this is going to, this is going to set. It's almost like a Jupiter return. So maybe you're um, nearing 24 or 36 or 48 or what is it? 60. Um, maybe you're, or maybe you're near a Saturn return as well. So you're 27 to 30 or you're getting into the six, age 60. Um, but it's like, this is a big, uh, a big completion of a cycle for you. And so like, it is very important that as you start this new one, if you want your life to be something and not like you have a vision, but like, if you want to be say happy, it's more like a state of being than it is the attainment of a goal pile three less, um, oh, I achieved this thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I'm a keynote speaker at the university of short-term commitments. I don't know. You know, it's nothing like that where it's a matter of achievement. It is not a matter of achievement. It's a matter of passion. That's why you just keep hearing passion. What makes you happy? You want to focus on feelings, pile three. Feelings, 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 emotions, what fills you up. And that's going to lead you. Um, that's going to lead you moving forward. Yeah, that's kind of like your breadcrumbs to get to where, to get to your house. So that's awesome. Yeah, this is an awesome time. Really expect what you enjoy and what you don't. Yeah. And it's like anything that doesn't, I hear like, don't take action towards. Like if it do, it's not making you happy, um, it's not, it's like not for you at this time. Let's see. I, I want to get a little more here. Spirit, can you, can you give me? Yeah. Um, a lot of you are going to be very successful but you don't want to be chained to something you don't love that's what i feel like you don't want to be chained to vampires you don't want to be chained to things that are going to just deplete you there's this idea of depletion you want to go towards things that fill you up fill you up fill you up um like water i get that idea like water you know because it's going to be stronger even here with the solace of bodies in capricorn like more than your work ethic and your discipline or anything else it's going to be your emotions your feelings that actually lead you to get where you want to go pile three interesting so that's a very big indication here um very big indication whatever you feel happy doing whatever makes you feel strong beautiful seen awesome um that's something worth going towards if you get negative feelings towards something yeah it's kind of like it's something that you could get chained to that you don't want to be this is so cool pile three you're at you're you're at such a pivotal point in your life, and I don't mean that to, I don't say that to scare you. I say that to say um, this is this is your time. Like this is your time to shine, and not necessarily like you're going to be seen right away, but you're going to build to something that is going to make you seen. That's going to bring you the most happiness. Yeah. Interesting. Hold on, let me get a clarifier. Yeah. Yeah, it's like not worrying about the judgment, not worrying about what people think, not worrying about what's happened before. What makes you happy now? in this present moment? What brings you joy now? That's what's important. It doesn't matter if something used to bring you joy. It doesn't matter if you were good at something. Hell, it doesn't matter if you were great at something, Pile 3. It doesn't matter if people made fun of you for the thing you love. It doesn't matter any of that. What makes you happy now? What makes you feel things now? What lights you up now? That's your question. That's what needs inspection. In fact, you don't even, I really feel Pile 3 Spirit's kind of like you don't want to look too far into the future, which may be a habit of yours. It's wanting to know, you know, long term, I want this or this or this. It's like, no, 
right now because it's the beginning it's about your intuition it's about just trusting your heart what you want what makes you what makes you feel like an aries right like what gets your fire going what gets you uh driven what gives you desire um and whatever that is that's what you want to move towards oh i love this reading yeah because a lot of you um I feel this idea of shame, like a lot of you feel ashamed of the things you like or the things you truly enjoy, but you shouldn't because um, basically it's like it's going to lead you, kind of lead you to people, it's kind of like power one and power two where it's going to lead you to the most authentic version of yourself, but you're kind of different than power two because power two is kind of on a false foundation and it feels like you guys actually don't have one yet. And so if you, I hear like choose correctly, right, choose based on your heart, choose based on your soul, choose based on your passion, then you're going to find this beautiful sense of community, you're going to find like all these wonderful things because you're being authentic to yourself. The more you try and run from that, the more you try and focus on maybe just success or um, fulfilling expectations or appearing a certain way, or um, just ensuring that you're in something that's safe, that won't hurt you. You're not going to get where you're not gonna, this new beginning. Um, you're still going to, you're setting a foundation regardless, but it's not going to be the one you like. It's kind of like, rather than begrudgingly taking each brick you're making a game out of it because life, this is like a time to make life a game. So what brings you, what game brings you the most fun? I'm also being drawn to, you know, field day. They have like a bunch of activities on the field. And oftentimes there's kind of like a free for all moment where yes, you have to do like all the activities, but then you can go to the one you like the most. What was that for you, pile three? What was that? What was your favorite thing for field day? You know what I mean? Go towards that. Don't go towards, oh, but I should, or, you know, oh, uh, more kids play uh, foosball or, oh, more people, you know, my mom prefers that I do this. What would you do if you had the free reign? Wow. I'm seeing the rainbow. Like I'm seeing things really light up for you. And the rainbow here again, you're at a very rare moment. This is a pivotal moment. Like if you were going to say, you know how they say like, oh, you have a saving point or something in video games or like, um, a core memory or something this is like a core memory moment not where you necessarily remember it but it's just setting the foundation for everything else and so it's really important that you set a good one and the best way to do it is actually not based on thinking it's not based on planning it's based on feeling what feels right it's based on your heart your heart will lead you where you want to go and from there you can start using your brain right like you bring everything else in conjunction but for now trust your heart your heart knows where it wants to go and um that's going to lead you and then you're going to yeah, you'll deal with the other things as they come. The disappointment, the mental part of it, you know, the um, maybe emotional part of it. But for now, trust your heart. I think that's all I'm seeing for you. Is there anything else, Spirit? Yeah, and then Spirit's final thing, I'm just being drawn to the Ten of Swords, is don't be afraid. A lot of you, maybe you've tried this before to go after what you were passionate about. And you found that you were made fun of or you were hurt or people betrayed you. But I hear spirits saying that's not this cycle, right? Like the reason that happened during that cycle of your life, there were things you needed to learn. And obviously you learned a lot, a great deal about pain, pile three. You learned a great deal maybe about being an outsider, about ostracization, about um, people using words against you, about people hurting you. You learned a lot about pain. And as you go through this new cycle, it's not like you're going to forget that. You remember pain. You're, you're, you know, the body members remembers pain. But it's more so that because you learned that lesson, yeah, spirits like you don't need to repeat it again. And so in essence, don't make it a self-fulfilling prophecy where you're afraid to go after what you want because you're afraid to be made fun of. Because I hear this idea of like, and I even feel it in my gut pile three, that's not going to happen this time around. That's not what this cycle is for you. I mean, this cycle is more about inspiring other people to do the same. That's what I feel like. This, this cycle is about you being the leader and inspiring people to rise from ashes the way you did. We don't have death here, but I do feel death, um, the death card energy heavy with the transformation, but probably because you already, again, you're at the new beginning. So yeah. Oh, I hope you do this pile three. I really, I hope you uh, find the courage to be sincere and honest and authentic with yourself to really, regardless of how people view it, Go towards what makes you happy and not what's expected or what you think is going to make you money or what, um, you know, people have told you is better. Go towards just what feels right for you, what makes you happy and joyous. And just see. I hear spirits saying, just see how we light your world up. Oh, that's so cool. I'm being drawn to Christmas time where they light up everything, the, the, the grand Christmas trees, and it's just everything's lit up and it's so beautiful. And that's kind of your energy and that's what they'll show you with that. But yeah. That's all I'm seeing, Pile 3. I loved this reading. I love this for you. I love to know that this is what needs closer inspection. Let me know. What are some things that brings you joy? You know what? And if you're not on an anonymous account here, what are things that bring you joy that you actually feel ashamed of? Because I don't think there should be shame there. Maybe, you know, in the comments, if I ever get back to them, which I try, um, you, I can let you know that I'm into the same thing or, you know, something like that instead of feeling so much shame towards it.
yeah. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one, Pile 3. Bye. Okay, hello, Pile 4. If you picked this beautiful card here, then this is going to be your reading. So what I was getting with this card is nurturing your innocence again. A lot of you have lost the connection, I feel, to your inner child. You've lost the connection to your own... It's like you've lost the connection to your own innocence. Um... And that's what spirit wants to wants you to take a closer look at. It's like your healing, your comfort, uh, like the softer parts of you. But I went ahead and pre-pulled a few cards. So I'm going to lay them out and we'll get into this. So what needs closer inspection? Pile number four. Pile number four. Sorry if I said three, but I meant four. Yeah, it's like take a closer look at yourself, at your life, at what you're working towards interesting and putting a little more love towards yourself i get this sense pile four that you're a person who looks to other people it's not you're a boss like it's not that you're not a boss but it's like it's uh, almost like you look to other people for validation or you look to make sure other people are taken care of despite you being injured right or despite you not feeling good it's sort of like you need to flip that around and focus on your own healing, like focus on you rather than focusing on other people or on goals. Focus on your inner child. Yeah, there's this idea of nurturing your inner child, re-loving yourself, like loving yourself. I don't really feel a lot of self-love from this pile. I feel like you're one of those people who may feel, you know, I'm loved for what I do or for what I achieve, not for who I am. Um, and that is really sad. Let's look at this. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're someone who, um, so I'm getting a couple of different things, but I'll, I'll kind of list them out as they come and you can see which one kind of applies to you. Some of you joke are very self-deprecating. You joke about yourselves. You joke about everything that hurts you, but like it really still does hurt you. You know what I mean? You make jokes, but it's, it's a, it's a coping mechanism for unhealed, for unhealed trauma is what I'm saying. Like, it's not, I understand it, but it's, it's still unhealed. Like if it was healed, you wouldn't even bring it up in a joking manner. You wouldn't need to, you know what I'm saying? Like it would be something that it brought up, you could speak on and then let go of. But the fact that you joke about it means it has some sort of, um, it's almost like still a tender spot, but you're trying to use it as your strength. Others of you are just, you don't reveal your emotions. You keep everything in. You don't tell people how you're feeling. You don't, let people see you vulnerable, I think is a big thing. You don't want people to know how weak you're feeling, how awful you feel. Um, and what else? And others of you may capitalize on it and so it no longer feels genuine. Kind of like YouTubers who fake cry or something or like you've used your emotions before that like they've ceased. It's almost like they've become a... It's almost like they're being used in some way. And I don't know, even know if this is by you intentionally. It could be like, for example, an actor or actress, like your emotions are being used for the screen or for money, or like as a TikToker or an influencer, that's the same kind of thing. Or even, I was even being drawn to like a social worker or a therapist where your emotions are being used to kind of like heal people. So you're not really, it's like they cease to really be genuine because of the usage of them. It, it kind of like takes away the dopamine of it or something. Um, so there is a need to inspect definitely yourself and your inner child, like in your, and your, uh, care, your self care, who you are outside of the things you do. That's what I really feel with this Capricorn. Who am I outside of the things I do? Because I identify with that so much, or who am I outside of taking care of other people? Because I identify with that so much. Like I'm also being drawn to, if you've ever seen Encanto, um, and there is a, See, you got the nine of wands twice. Wow. There's a scene in Encanto, or there's a song where she, I don't even know what it's called, but she's like, oh, I think it's called pressure, surface pressure or surface or something. And it's like this really strong, she's the really strong sister. Uh, but there's a line she says where she's like, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I'm not of use or in service or something. She's basically like, I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. Um, and that's what I feel here, pal, for, where it's like, I'm not, I'm worthless if I don't, provide money or if I don't you know if I don't have everything together if I don't do everything I'm not worth anything um that's wrong that's completely wrong your worth is inherent regardless of what you do but this is really I'm being drawn it's to your solar plexus chakra your feelings of worthiness and even your root chakra that maybe you want to take a look at but um 
yeah, it's like you're worth so much more than you're giving yourself credit for, regardless of what you do, Pile 4. It's not because of what you do that makes you worthy. It's just who you are. And that worth would be there regardless of if you did the things you do or you didn't do those things, you know? Even if you were a different person or if you were, um, like, for instance, if you didn't do the dishes one night or you didn't work that expensive job, that doesn't make you less worthy, okay? That doesn't make you less worthy as a person. That doesn't make you less worthy to exist. That doesn't make you less worthy of love. That doesn't make you less worthy of affection. That doesn't make you, um, like, less worthy of having pain or anything. Like, those, these are things we cannot quantify on a scale in a sense you know um you are worthy regardless of the things you do okay um even if you were to do really awful things that doesn't mean you're not worthy okay it means you're very misguided and there's some things we need to address there but that doesn't mean you're not worthy uh also you are not your mistakes pile four you may feel like you identify a lot with the things you do wrong or the things you don't get right but you're not your mistakes you're more than your mistakes um there is a real need to reconnect with your sense of empowerment of being empowered because True empowerment, Pile 4, is regardless of circumstances. It reg is regardless of if you're wearing a trash bag or a Gucci dress. It's regardless of if you have to drive a $100 metal trash can or you have to, you're driving a $2 million, I don't even know what costs $2 million because I don't know cars. But the point is worth is inherent in, like, as a human, your worth is inherent regardless of what you do, okay? Um, and it's not something anyone can take or give to you. That's the point too, is no one can give it to you either, Pile 4. Um, no one can um, sort of verify it or no one can acknowledge it enough for it to be true for you. Just as no one can take it away from you. They can make you believe it's been taken away, but it's always there regardless. And that's this idea of it's always there. You always have um, the strength in you. You've always had the light in you, regardless of exterior circumstances or treatment. That's very important. Very, very important for you. I want to, yeah. And so I feel this idea of being more honest about how you feel. I feel like you're someone who you keep a lot in. Like you keep a lot in or you just don't. Like I said, there's a self-deprecating humor potentially. But it's like you don't actually. Vulnerability is something here. Like allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I also feel the sense of like, especially around people. You, you resist that urge because you don't want to be weak, maybe because you don't want to be taken advantage of or you don't think you're worthy or whatever your reason is for not wanting to appear weak in front of people. Um, I feel like people are actually your strength. Like what you do for people, I also hear not unnoticed. So it's not unnoticed the sacrifices or things you're doing for other people. And therefore, the right people, and I feel like for most of you, just the people in your life would want to be there for you. Now, if they wouldn't want to be there for you, I, I feel like that is just you knowing then that they really were using you for what you could do. But the people who truly love you, Pile 4, love you for who you are. They don't love you for what you do for them. I mean, yes, they love that you do things for them. Who doesn't? But it's not. that's not the reason they love you. They love you. So if you needed, um, you know, support in return, people who love you are willing to give it. In fact, they're normally eager to give it. They're eager to help because they love you. Um... And I feel like that's very strong here. Love is very big. Um, wanting love, not feeling worthy of love, not really nurturing love, self-love here within yourself. No matter how perceived you are by the outside world, Power 4 as being a boss or being this or being that or, you know, however they may perceive you. Inside, I get the sense of I still feel small. Oh, my babies. Power number one, my babies. Y'all killing me. Y'all killing me out here. Make my heart hurt. Uh, yeah, but we really need to realize our self-worth here. And it's not something that anyone can realize for you. It is something, it is your personal journey. But can I tell you, Pile 4, like, it really is not something anyone can tell you you have. Or, likewise, they cannot take it away, okay? It's kind of just like, why the F is there a universe? We can keep going on and on about how it was a chicken or the egg or, you know, it was a Big Bang. But what came before the Big Bang? What caused the Big Bang? You never, there's not really, I get this idea, there's not really a beginning or an end pile four so just as there's that there's like there's some things that just are as far as we know and and you just are you're not what you do yeah yeah this is something that bothers you actually quite a bit I feel like if you if you let yourself think about it so a lot of you may be very action oriented you do things you don't really sit around still too long to really evaluate this feeling but um it's something worth taking a deeper look into now i'm not saying like you i'm not getting the indication here that you need to go full hermit mode and just like dive into the depths of your feeling but it's more so it feels like gentle nudges like hey you're on this reading right now um you know maybe just take a closer look as you're hearing this do you feel like you're worthy is this sending you spiraling right now is it making you um think 
Maybe after this, you just need five minutes of silence to reconcile with yourself and tell yourself I'm worthy, you know? Um, and then you go back to your life, but it's like re it's changing narratives. That's what I feel like. That's what I hear changing the narrative in yourself. And then as you're changing the narrative, letting the people around you support that. That's another big thing. So, um, like if you're being self-deprecating and people are encouraging that, maybe those aren't the right people to be around. But again, I feel, I feel like, um, pile four, you're actually not surrounded by bad people. I get the sense like you're surrounded by people who really do want to uplift you. You just don't um, really see that. You're just constantly, again, this idea of looking for threats or looking for things to go wrong or for people to try and tear you down. But that's actually not what the people around you want to do. They want to watch you grow. They want to support you. Um, you know, they think you, I think they really, people do admire what you do, Pile 4. They admire what you do. So whatever your career is or maybe art you do or whatever you're producing, like whatever you work with, with your hands or creation or likewise just a job or career, people admire this. But it is not all of you. You're not just your job. Again, you're not just the things you do. There's more to you than that. And that's very important for you to know, Pile Number. Yeah. Um... I get this idea of the martyr being symbolic of what not to do and more what to assign to yourself. So service to oneself is really what I'm being drawn to. A little more you, pile four, a little more you. <laughs> I'm being drawn to Sh Shit's Creek and there's a, uh, there's a, there's the girl, Alexis. She's the daughter and she's as like the best self-worth I've ever seen. Like she's, she's completely undaunted by anything. You know what I mean? She has a kind of fearless energy. And even though she is just, she has like no skills or anything, she charms everyone around her just by existing and exuding this like energy. She does like this thing with her hand a lot. But anyway, she has a song in there where she's like, uh, it's a little bit Alexis. And like, even though she can't sing or dance, it's like, she's never deterred also by failure or by um, being made a fool. Like she always has this sense of like self-worth and confidence. I feel like that character is something you need to start developing in yourself. Like regardless of how people see you, you're that person. You know what I mean? You're that person, regardless of what is seen by other people, regardless of if you are rich or you are dirt poor, you're still that person. Yeah, and then adding more balance, adding more self-care, more time for yourself, I think is so important for you, Pile 4. Or likewise, just spending time with family where there is, I feel like this idea of there is no objective. A lot of you only maybe partake in things or try and do things with objective. Maybe you're very into like the Jeff Bezos or um, like high achieving people type things. Maybe you're into videos like that too, where it's like, oh, you know, wake up at 6 a.m., have everything planned out, follow a schedule every day. But it's like, uh, at this point, it's not really serving you. Like you need a close, you need more balance in your life more than anything. So spending more time with friends and family for the sake of it, just for the sake of joy and connectedness, not for the sake of um, developing or just because you have to fit them into your time frame. It's more about uh, vulnerability and being more, I think it's really connecting with your feminine energy in a way that some of you have not ever done and some of you have disconnected from for a while because of what you wanted to do or achieve. But it's really, I hear spirits saying like, it's time to reconnect with that. Also being drawn to Simba, I don't know, maybe that the Lion King where uh, he goes off on his own, you know, he makes that mistake and he runs off because he thinks he kills his, he killed his dad. It's also Hamlet, by the way, but that's a side note. So he thinks he kills his dad in, in, in Lion King, which most people have seen. But then he realizes, you know, he has to go back and embrace who he is. He has to embrace the self-worth that he is a king regardless of if he runs away to a forest or if he is leading Pride Rock. And so he goes back and he faces Carr faces car faces scar and then he takes his place as king that's kind of the energy here where it's like em embrace there's a need to embrace even yourself more than you are right now but again you don't have to uh, once again this isn't something you need to push too hard where you need to schedule time to do it it's just something i feel spirit saying something to kind of think about and then let go of so like even after this reading you don't need to spend 20 minutes journaling about how you're not this person and you need to become this person now it's just like no just like you watch this reading you have an idea of this next time you say something self-deprecating keep it in mind like oh yeah you know it'll kind of be a trigger memory like oh yes i probably shouldn't be so self-deprecating like that wasn't that's not a very kind thing to say about myself i probably shouldn't say that um things like that will really help you pile forward moving forward to embrace yourself more and then what else am i seeing And then addressing any cracks. That's what I heard. Addressing any cracks. Oh, okay. Spirits clarify. This is addressing any cracks. So 
what I want to add on here, pile number four, is that you actually are doing really, really well, Spirit says. Like, you're doing a great job. You're, you're doing what you need to do. Um, but this is just addressing any cracks in the foundations, right? Like, I almost feel almost how sometimes out of anger, I don't know, none of you maybe should be that angry. But if you are, you've ever, like, punched a hole in the wall or something, and then uh, mom or dad or someone's got to come and they got to put coke down or like, you know, put drywall back behind it and patch it up. It's kind of like this, this is just patch up work for you, pile four. This isn't like a fundamental overturn of who you are, what you do. Yeah. So it's like, no, it's just a patch up. So, um, don't, don't get too much into it or don't dive too far into it or get too deep, too lost in the sauce trying to improve. This is just a small, little fix just a, something to think about when you start using bad humor or when you hold back being vulnerable or you hold back sharing with the people uh, also hold back sharing your struggles with the people you love or people you work with you know i'm um, just trying to always appear collected and put together this is just something to keep in mind uh to better cultivate like the feminine in you to better love yourself that's all but yeah i'm not gonna beat a dead horse here pile number four that is what i'm seeing for you if you enjoy this reading comment down below uh be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next pile, next pile. I'll see you next time, pile number four. Bye.